a lot of patients will come um, with uh, that need chemotherapy first, and I think that you know the issue really is uh, with these patients that they come with a very large locally advanced tumor. You know, a woman will come in, her breast will be really red or have a really big tumor in her breast, and you know the issue becomes what do you do? And what I usually tell people is that um, you know we could do a mastectomy on you now but we probably have to give you chemo after, so why don't we just do it first and see if it shrinks. It's kind of how I explain ne this neoadjuvant therapy to people. Right. Um, and so oftentimes, you know, people will come, and I'm curious to hear your opinion about this, you know, what they think about that, because a lot of people will go, I don't want to leave my cancer in my right. breast, you know, my God, it's going to spread all over my body. What do people say to you when that happens? Do they say that to you at all? I'm curious. Um, well, often the surgeon is involved from the very beginning. Correct. So they're not only hearing that from, from our right. standpoint, that I, I have not really had um, many patients good. express that thing. concern. Thing. Yeah. And I also think that because we're treating them while it's there, it's very encouraging for them to know that as we continue to monitor that tumor, that it's shrinking. Right, they love that. I think patients that is, really liked yeah. having it, knowing that it shrinks. Um, I but I haven't had um, uh, maybe a handful of patients that really express good. concern on that. And the other thing that's really important is that, you know, so a certain percentage of those patients who need chemotherapy first, this neoadjuvant chemotherapy, uh, actually are HER2 positive. And, you know, I at least explain it to them. I say, listen, you know, you're one of that one out of five people whose cancer has HER2 gene in it. It makes your cancer very sensitive to chemo when we give it with Herceptin, mm -hmm. you know, and it will shrink a lot mm -hmm. generally, and it'll be very quick when it happens. Mm -hmm. And I think people like that because um, we really have come a long way in the last 15 or 20 years with drugs like Herceptin, trastuzumab, and things like that. Do people ever ask you about that at all? You know, like, oh, what is this Herceptin stuff? What is this pertuzumab um, stuff? What is that? I think that people are savvy enough. Uh, they, a lot of people go on the computer and they right. want to know what targeted therapy is. Yeah, there it is. And uh -huh. we explain that your cancer expresses certain characteristics right. that we uh -huh. can target with right. this chemotherapy, right. or actually targeted therapy. Um, I explain the difference between how systemic chemotherapy works as opposed to uh, targeted therapy right. that uh, the traditional systemic chemotherapy doesn't know the difference between a healthy That's cell a or yeah. a abnormal cell right. really but with the targeted sense. therapy um, it goes right to that tumor right. so using a, um, a regimen such as TCHP we're getting it from all angles right. and like that. even though that it is a pretty heavy-duty regimen right. it gives great results. It does, as you know. I mean, people do really well with it. A lot of people have what's called a complete pathologic response, which means that there's no cancer left. And in fact, if you come in and your cancer is negative for the receptor for estrogen, positive for HER2, and we give you neoadjuvant TCHP, the complete response rate, that is there's no cancer left when we do surgery, mm -hmm. is about 70%, mm -hmm. 75%. It's really cool when it happens. But it is a pretty heavy duty regimen, I agree. Um, and that's part of the nursing, uh, our side again, is the, the side effects that, that patients do experience with TCHP. Um, we we um, try to help patients through that. There's a lot of, um, we have a lot of GI issues. Yeah. What, what kind of GI issues? Um, many of our patients develop diarrhea. Um, and we try to manage that with over-the-counter Imodium mm -hmm. um, and have them follow that uh, directions pretty faithfully to help mm -hmm. keep that um, diarrhea as best controlled as we can, um, encourage fluids um, to let them, to make sure they let us know if they feel like they're getting behind and they're dehydrated, then we'll have them come in for fluids. Right, we do that. In fact, it's more than I thought. I mean, I think the big thing, it's really surprising. You know, I think that we didn't, I mean, we expect diarrhea from certain drugs. And I think that, you know, Herceptin, Trastuzumab, you know, it had a little bit of diarrhea. But I think adding the Pertuzumab to it, I think, and you know this, you see this as much as I do. You know, I think we're really getting more diarrhea. I think there are people who we've had to stop the pertuzumab in, especially yeah. some a little bit older, yes. you know, or patients who are like in their six, late 60s, early 70s that we do this to. You know, we like to try to give everybody TCHP mm -hmm. if we can. Sometimes we just give THP if they can't do the carbo, you know, or sometimes even when we give uh, nanoparticle paclitaxel or Braxane mm -hmm. with Herceptin pertuzumab, even though that's not, you know, standard of care. But we try to do that to save them the steroids. You know, but even with all of that, and you know this, we have this all the time. You know, if people come in, you know, gosh, I keep going to the bathroom all the time, and mm -hmm. we have to stop the pertuzumab. And remember, we have a patient very, you know who this is, you know, someone we have in our clinic right now who had TCHP, ended up in the hospital. Right. You know, then got it at a reduced dose, ended up in the hospital. Right. Then we said, okay, let's stop the carbo. 
ended up in the hospital. And then we stopped the pertuzumab, still had trouble. And that brings up a point where um, <coughs> we have, again, a spectrum of responses. Um, some patients honestly can get through TCHP with little to no issues. Right, exactly. And then we have patients who really have problems with it. Um, right. So it's hard for me as the nurse to say, this is exactly how it's gonna be because everybody's different. And you know what, the weird thing is there's no way to know who's there gonna do no it, there's no way to know. It could be the most healthy, robust, 45-year-old woman in the world and should be miserable. It could be a 75-year-old woman who does great. As a matter of fact, uh, in our teaching session, for that initial teaching <laughs> session, I say that, that your first cycle is a learning curve for all of us right. because we That's don't know how saying. you are going to respond. That's a really cool way of saying it. I like that. I like that a lot.